your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax. And while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. How about a kitchen match, Claudia? What for, darling? Light the kitchen, of course. What do you think? If you promise to use it for that... I'll give you one. I promise. There are the windowsill next to the stove. Help thanks, yourself. Thanks. You're welcome. David, it's nice to be through with breakfast early. Gives us a little while before you leave for the office. Mm hmm. Just a little while to waste. David, we're not wasting this little while. I think it's these little whiles that make being married so wonderful. You're silly. I'm not as silly as you are. David, aren't you going to smoke some of your new tobacco? How do you know I'm not? Because whatever you lit smells like your old tobacco to me. Since when did you get to be such an expert smeller? Mm -mm. I didn't think you could tell Virginia Burley from corn silk. Is there a difference? Well, I thought so. I knew you were going to say that. Do you know half the time I know exactly what you're thinking? And half the time I know exactly what you are not thinking. Since you're so smart, I'm thinking now. And I know what? You do? You're thinking that when I count three, you'll take your hands out of the soap suds. Mm, you're warm. And you're going to forget all about the dishes. Oh, David, you're getting warmer. And you're going to give Bluff his breakfast. You're cold. Shakespeare? You're icy. Well, let's see. You're going to turn around and let me see if you have a cinder in your eye. That's much warmer. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. You haven't. I haven't what? A cinder in your eye. Now you're very, very warm. Is um, this what you were thinking? Mm. I thought so. Oh, David, I'm scalded. But it's such a wonderful way to get burned. What's the great rush? Why are we walking at such a pace? What pace, Mama? This isn't more of a pace than usual, is it? Frankly, much more of a one. <laughs> Where are we rushing to? Nowhere. Then I'm going home directly and now. What's your big rush? Me. Claudia, I've been sitting around Dr. Rowland's waiting room with you for the last one and a half hours. You think I had nothing else to do? <gasps> it's quarter of six. Oh, it's so late. Honestly, you wait... One and a half hours to see a doctor who then sees you for one and a half minutes. And then all he tells you is that you're perfectly all right. Would you rather have him tell you something else? Well, I'm certainly not getting my money's worth this way. You know, Julia tells me he's the best baby doctor in New York. Doesn't seem to me I need the best baby doctor in New York. I mean, well, Dr. Rowland isn't doing a thing about me. I could be having this baby completely without him. The trouble with you is that you'd rather have a bargain than a bonanza. That what I'd rather? <laughs> and you stop worrying about your $300. The less Dr. Roland earns it, the better off you are. <laughs> Here comes my bus. It's jam. I like jam. You'll come out marmalade. <laughs> I like marmalade, too. Better than us. Much better. Goodbye, Mama. Have a nice trip. Thank you. I always liked riding in a jar. I hope you preserve till you get home. <laughs> That's not the least bit punny of you. Oh, Mama, punning is the lowest. Oh, my bus is leaving. Goodbye, goodbye. Hi, Claudia Brown. Huh? What? Uh, why, Helen, it's you. Hello. Well, well, it's been a long time. Before I was married. Well, that's not so long. It feels forever. Hey, that doesn't sound so good. I meant it to sound heavenly. You look wonderful, Helen. Do I? Thanks, honey. 
Say, Claudia, how's that handsome husband of yours? David, he's marvelous. Marvelous, hmm? Sounds as if you like it. Like what? Being married. Oh, I love it. I'm having a baby. You are? Oh, that's a shame. Why a shame? Well, so soon. You're, you're hardly married and you're so young. We're the same age and I wouldn't dream of getting myself tied down like that. Why, I remember when we were in school, we said... But, we... Helen, you're married, too. You married, you married a whole two months before I did. I'm divorcing. Well, which way are you walking? Ho- home to meet David. I live in a hotel right around the corner. How about dropping up? Oh, no, I couldn't. I- I'll be late. Well, he'll wait. It hurts a man to wait. You'll learn that. You're getting a divorce, Helen, not me. I'm awfully sorry, Helen, that you and your husband didn't... Mm, that's all right, dear. No condolences. It can be quite a happy event. Like getting married. Don't, don't say that. Your first baby, my first divorce. Life plays tricks, doesn't it? Come on. Come on up a little while. Well, I... We haven't had a good talk since... Well, since day before graduation. Come on. Do your David good to wish you were there. You think so? Well, just, just for a few minutes. Claudia, don't you feel sort of trapped and resentful? What? Oh, what I mean is... Here you are, 18. 19. All right, 19. I'm having a baby. Where do you go from here? Oh, I'm going to have lots more. At least five more. You see, David and I are moving to a farm in April. Moving to a farm? Isn't it wonderful, all that fresh milk and fresh air for the baby? It's a beautiful old house built in 1760. Mm, Sounds great. You really want to bury yourself in the country? Bury myself? Oh, it's not as bad as all that. Of course, I don't blame you for wanting to hide your husband out there. He's a very handsome man. My husband wasn't at all his type. There aren't many like David. You're a funny one. I remember at school, you hardly ever went out, always worrying your mother would be worrying about your, your rushing home early. I thought you'd never get married. And now you're so married, you keep looking at your watch. Well, it, it's later than usual. Um, look, Claudia, why don't you call David up, have him meet you at my place, I have a dinner engagement, and the four of us could dine out someplace. How about it, hmm? well, Helen, that's awfully nice, but we couldn't, not tonight. Got something else on? No, but, well, we, we just couldn't. Thanks, anyway. Oh? You don't go out much, do you? Nope, not much. We never seem to have time. You know, you having a baby and a husband doesn't seem possible. Well, well, I certainly wouldn't think of having one without the other, would you? <laughs> well, good luck with your David. But don't stay home too much. And don't have too many babies. How many is too many, Helen? You'll know. Well, goodbye, Claudia. Call me sometime and, and give my love to David. Tell him to be careful. I'm single again. don't say. I'm sorry I kept you waiting, darling, but I, I really couldn't help it. You couldn't? No. But you don't have to apologize, darling. It's all right. It is? Of course. Here, I'll hang up your coat. Thanks. Well, d- don't you even want to know what held me up? I spoke to Mama. She said you had to wait for Dr. Rowland. Oh, but I, I saw somebody else, too. Good. Come on in now. I made a fire in the fireplace. You know, I can't think of a better place. <laughs> oh, I love it. I thought you would. But, uh, does that mean that we have to stay home tonight? No. No, not not if you don't want to. Ooh, well, I haven't made up my mind yet. Well, take your time, darling. We, we have all evening. <gasps> Look, it's a beautiful fire. I used a kitchen match, and see? Here. Here in my pocket, I have a present for you. Present mm-hmm. what? A whole new box of kitchen matches that I bought just for you. Oh, you're sweet. A whole box for me? Mm, Yep, I won't even borrow one. What do you think of that? Oh, what a husband. (laughs) You know, I don't think any person can change so much over one day. That's what I think. You'll see. Well, here I am home again. You know, I seem to be home an awful lot of the time, don't I? Uh, Yeah, yawn is catching. 
It's nice, isn't it? Mm. If you want that sort of thing. David. What now? Don't you think we're home too much, maybe? Yes, I think so. I think we ought to go out more. You do? Sure. I've been telling you that for months. You have? I don't remember. Because you don't want to. Oh. Well, anyway, David, don't you think that I'm too young to be throwing myself away on this sort of life? I've thought of it often. We pretty much rushed into the baby, and I'd understand completely about the farm, and if you'd only call up one of your friends... David, are you serious? Certainly I'm serious, aren't you? No. You're not? And what's all this about? I was just... Well, I was just... Oh, you're no fun at all. I'm not. You spoil everything. I do. This morning, everything was perfect. We both thought so. And tonight I come in with a completely new way of life for us, and that seems to be perfect with you, too. It can't be. It makes sense. Well, make up your mind which way you want. Me? Make up my mind? That's right. Can't have both. And if we did it your way, we'd be having our first divorce instead of our first baby. Darling, are you sure you went to see Dr. Rowland this afternoon and not some bad psychiatrist? I don't need a psychiatrist. But I think you do. Me? This morning, everything was wonderful. Tonight, you come in with some nutty idea, and I David, try to... then you do think they're nutty ideas? Well, for us, they are. They were nutty for Helen Drew, too, darling. I met her on the street. She's all mixed up. We're not, are we? Mixed up? Well, speak for yourself, John Alden. Imagine her trying to tell me. But, David, you know, she thinks you're very handsome. Oh? Yes, she does. She said so. Mm. Oh, please do let stay home this evening. Unless you'd rather go out, and if you don't think it's wrong of me to want to, and... and... Well, to tell you the truth now, Claudia, there, there's only one thing that I want you to do. What, darling? Stop talking to people, stop listening to people, and... Yes, that's two things. And there's just one thing more. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. Housework can be pretty strenuous some days, no matter how clever you are about arranging your work. But there are ways to ease things for yourself, and here's one. Keep plenty of Coke on ice, and when you've been going like 60... Step over to the refrigerator and treat yourself to the pause that refreshes. It's surprising how much more you can do when you work refreshed. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause. The pause that refreshes.